Hello, everybody. Today, we will be discussing about uh, an issue of growing interest. More and more evidence is being gathered about the, the association between frailty and oral health. And we will take a glance at this uh, issue Thanks to the participation of uh, three uh, dedicated researchers working on the field. My name is Luis Miguel Gutierrez Robledo. I am the Director General of the National Institute of uh, Geriatric Medicine. And today we will be sharing the floor with uh, Luis Elena de Nascimento Torres from the Federal University of Santa Maria in Brazil. Faisal Hakim from the Center for Epidemiology at the University of Manchester in the United Kingdom, and Roberto Carlos Castrejon Perez, researcher in oral health at the National Institute of Geriatric Medicine. Welcome you all. Well, in the first place, we will listen to the introduction to this issue by Dr. Luisa Elena Donacimento Torres. She is an odontologist with a doctorate on uh, odontology, working at the Federal University of Santa Maria in Brazil. And she will be lecturing about the available e evidence and the methodological details and results from her analysis. Luis Elena, the floor is yours. I'm Luisa Torres. And this presentation is the first part of a symposium entitled Integrating the Evidence on the Cessation Between Oral Health and frailty. My presentation is entitled The Available Evidence, Methodological Details and Results. Before starting, I would like to declare no conflict of interest. My goal is to present and discuss methodological details and results reported on the association between oral health and frailty. My presentation will cover a quick review on why oral health matters, and I will address briefly the epidemiolo epidemiology of oral diseases. Also, I will make an introduction about the association between oral health and frailty, which will be concluded by Dr. Hakim. So why does oral health matter? Teeth and mouth play physical, social, and psychological functions that allow us, among other things, to communicate, to smile, chill, and swallow. A decrease in our function as a result of aging has been suggested to have major effects on dysfunction and mortality risk. There is evidence that maintaining or increasing masticatory function is associated with improving diet in life functions of other people and is implicated in reducing the risk of death or health loss. Therefore, oral health is part of general health and consequently is associated with different aspects of health, well-being and quality of life. Oral diseases share social determinants, risk factors and biological pathways with other non-communicable diseases. In addition, it is important to mention that oral diseases are preventable and treatable. In, uh, however, the treatment of oral diseases can have an important impact on families' budget and may lead the subject to a continuous cycle of tooth extraction when not able to afford more complex treatment. Ultimately, it has a negative social and economic effect on public health. Oral diseases are highly, are highly prevalent throughout the life cycle and especially among the aging population due to their chronic nature. Tooth retention has increased as more older adults keep their natural teeth into old ages. Unfortunately, oral diseases are unequally distributed between and within countries, being influenced, influenced by social and commercial determinants of health 
representing a sensitive clinical marker of social disadvantage. Thus, the developed countries present lower prevalence of poor oral health conditions. The cumulative nature of decay and periodontitis dictate that aging is always likely to be a factor associated with complete tooth loss or adultery. For example, untreated dental caries in the permanent dentition is the most prevalent health condition since 1990. In, uh, in old ages, uh, also old ages also bring some challenges to manage uh, the association between tooth retention and the presence of chronic diseases, polypharmacy, cherostomia, reduced mental dexterity and mobility limitations. Tooth loss, attachment loss due to periodontal disease, hyposalivation and decrease of motor skill can contribute to improper masticatory function. Missing teeth can be replaced, but it won't function the same as a natural teeth. Also, an improper rehabilitation increases the, his, the risk for incidence of dentalism, and it can turn into a negative cycle. As you can see here, through a quick search on PubMed from 2006 till today, more than 200 publications assessing oral health and frailty were retrieved. The topic is increasing in interest, and we can observe a steady increment in the number of publications during the last year. In addition, this map represents the distinct countries that we can find studies about this topic. As we can see, most of these studies have been performed in high-income countries. Studies have assessed different age groups, populations from distinct settings, and a variety of study designs. All of this heterogeneity results in increased difficulties comparing the results among the studies. We can find in the literature a great amount of frailty screening instruments that have been developed and used in different studies throughout the years. Although we can see a great number of papers that cite frailty instruments, according to Bhutan colleagues, there is still a lack of validation studies and of knowledge regarding frailty instrument selection. The lack of consensus on which instrument to use translates on differences in definitions, in frailty prevalence, and in finding, findings as well. It is important to highlight that we can observe manuscripts that have not assessed all of the five components of the frailty phenotype, but instead used a, a component as a proxy of the frailty phenotype screening. Here, we can observe different oral health variables assessed in the studies according to its design. The variables were categorized in broad topics as oral characteristics, oral hygiene, oral function, and afterwards they were classified into more specific subjects. For example, it was created the topic oral function into, uh, and its subgroups comprised chewing, swallowing, a close of force, among others. Moreover, the color depicts the study design. In orange, we observe the variables assessed in longitudinal research, and in gray, in the cross-sectional ones. This table presents some relevant variables for the evaluation of the association between oral health and frailty. It is possible to observe that all of them, independently of the way it was collected, either clinically or self-reported, were linked with frailty in at least three studies. For example, the variable number of teeth have been evaluated in cross-sectional, prospective, and retro retro retrospective studies, and it was possible to find an association with frailty 
when collected through clinical examination. Dry mouth or a subject measure uh, were associated with frailty in both cross-sectional and prospective studies. I'll take a minute in this slide and in the next one to call your attention on the variables associated with frailty in some cross-sectional studies. As you can see, there is around six studies that have verified the association between number of teeth and frailty. We can see in the green light. However, other six studies did not find this relationship, as, you can, as we can see in the red. And this happens between frailty and other oral health measures. Another example can be seen here. Even though self-hated oral health have been associated with frailty in these studies, another number of researchers did not find this association. A possible explanation for this discrepancy among the findings may be the fact that the studies included more than 70 different oral health variables, objectively, objectively and subjective measured assessed using different measuring tools. From what was presented, we can presume uh, a great number that the great number of covariates and measures used in different ways contribute to limit the ability to draw strong conclusions and to compare the findings. More studies are necessary to bear the understand the association between oral health and frailty, especially the longitudinal ones. Before concluding this presentation, it is important to consider some additional insights. First, it's necessary to have policies centered on oral health promotion and disease prevention throughout the life course, contributing to a healthy aging. Secondly, Frailty therapeutic interventions usually focus on exercise and caloric supplements without thinking, taking into account the pleasure of eating. In order to do that, the presence of natural teeth or proper oral rehabilitation is necessary and should be offered through public health systems. In addition, we need to consider the social role associated with eating the effect on self-esteem and on appetite. Finally, there is a need to focus on interprofessional assistance in order to guarantee an integral care. Thank you so much. That's my contact and questions are welcome. Thank you so much, Ms. Helena. It's been a great uh, presentation. And now we will uh, move uh, towards the next participant. Faisal Hakim uh, graduated at the King's College London in a public health doctorate. Now he's working at the Center for Epidemiology at the University of uh, Manchester, and he will be lecturing about how to reintegrate the available evidence. Faisal, the floor is yours. My name is Faisal Hakim. I'm a research associate at the Center for Epidemiology versus Arthritis at the University of Manchester. I'm also part of the Healthy Asian Research Group at the University of Manchester. And I'm so pleased and honored to present this work here at the World Congress of uh, Gerontology and Geriatrics, IAGG 2022. And today I'm going to cover the second part of this symposium, which will address integrating the available evidence on the association between oral health and frailty. To start with, uh, I have no conflict of interest to declare. And moving to the aim of the presentation, this presentation aims to elaborate on the integration and interpretation of the available evidence on the association between oral health and frailty, and also to identify and interpret the potential path linking oral health and frailty, and finally to offer a sound theoretical background on the association. And uh, an overview of what I'm going to cover. First, we'll go through the oral health variable that is compatible with higher prevalence and incidence of frailty, and also of the oral function measures. 
and then we'll go through uh, oral health and frailty models and composite measures of oral health. And after that, we'll talk about periodontitis and its association with frailty and the reversed relationship between frailty and oral health. So uh, this is basically uh, just to go through uh, um, what's uh, been covered in the first symposium, on the first presentation in the symposium. And this table shows studies that uh, were the variable that were associated with uh, oral health variables uh, in the literature. And to simplify uh, this, it seems like tooth loss and oral function and subjective measures of oral health, such as self-rated uh, oral health and use of dental services were associated with higher prevalence and incidence of frailty in the literature. But however, the most profound and consistent association were observed for tooth loss and oral function indicators. And that takes us to think how are these uh, measures of oral health associated. And that's why we're going to look into the models that were co that covered the association between oral health and frailty in the literature. And this is the first model uh, that was developed by Castrejon Pérez in 2012. And basically in this model, poor oral health demonstrated in severe periodontitis and dental caries as the most prevalent oral health condition could lead to, to frailty through the functional pathway as it would lead to tooth loss, chewing problems, and food selection. Uh, changes in food selection uh, include in, uh, changes in the quality and quantity of uh, food, which leads to less micronutrient, protein, fiber intake, and increased consumption of carbohydrate and saturated fat, uh, fat intake. And all of that could lead to malnutrition, weight loss, obesity, fatigue, and sarcopenia and uh, ad, uh, ultimately to frailty and adverse outcomes. This model also takes account of age itself, socioeconomic indicators, and comorbidities and chronic conditions. And this is the second model, which was developed by Azilu, Azilino. And in this model, deterioration of oral health, coupled with uh, poor oral hygiene, chronic diseases, medication, and swallowing problems, could lead to changes in food selection, poor nutrient intake, and malnutrition. And it shows, uh, it, we should also emphasize that in this model, uh, deterioration of oral health have a direct impact on sarcopenia and physical frailty. And also in this model, uh, the, uh, it took account of psychosocial factors and physiological changes as well. And this is the last model, what, which was developed in editorial by Morley in the Journal of Nutrition, Health, and Asian. And basically in this model, poor oral health uh, demonstrated in poor teeth and xerostomia coupled with cognitive dysfunction uh, could lead to chewing ability, which lead to uh, dysphagia and malnutrition, sarcopenia, frailty, and disability. And there is also a bidirectional relationship between malnutrition and sarcopenia and dysphagia. So uh, thinking of that, this model, it focuses on the function of the mouth and it gives rise to composite measure of uh, oral function that aim to evaluate a com uh, comprehensive oral function of older adults. And perhaps the most uh, important and most popular uh, composite measure of oral functions are oral hyperfunction and oral frailty. And these composite measures include objective and subjective variables, combining them from previously validated measures, conceptual models, and from statistical procedures. However, we should keep in mind that oral function is the convergence of three systems, the oral structures themselves, like the uh, teeth and periodontium, and also the musculoskeletal system, and finally, the nervous system. The convergence of these systems give rise to the complex oral function and gives rise to pain and taste, oral motor skills, and the vertical dimension of the face. However, if we look into uh, the composite measure that we have in the literature, it seems these composite measures uh, concentrate on only on oral structure and oral motor skills. So there is also the, uh, there is a need for more emphasis on the neuro neurological system and the musculoskeletal system as well. And in terms of periodontitis, which is the condition that affects the uh, structure that supports the teeth, it has been the oral condition attracting the most interest in health research. And that is basically based on its association with 
uh, chronic conditions such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease. And there is also sound theoretical background in its association with inflammatory response. And that um, should include the mechanism linking periodontitis and frailty. However, the available evidence till now doesn't support that mechanism. And many studies have hypothesized that periodontal disease might influence frailty status through its association with inflammatory biomarkers in the body. However, the impact of inflammation of frailty is still not fully understood. And for explaining this, we must recall that frailty is recognized as a state of increased vulnerability related to physiological decline and reduced capacity. Therefore, it's possible that frailty involves physiological systems challenging the ability to identify this association. And even though most of the studies in the literature concentrated on the association assigning oral health as a predictor and frailty as an outcome, the bidirectional association between oral health and frailty cannot be dismissed, as frailty could impact oral health through sarcopenia, loss of function, cognitive decline, which leads to difficulty performing oral hygiene and accessing dental services. And that could promote accelerated deterioration and decline of oral health. And that has been studied in limited number in a lim limited number of studies in the literature. And basically, these two studies in the first study, frail participants had higher odds of having active coronal decay services compared to robust participants. And the other study, frail older adults living in care homes, had lower odds of brushing and denture cleaning compared to non-frail residents. So to summarize, a uh, fewer number of teeth and poorer oral function showed the most consistent association with frailty. And the, the finding of uh, should be interpreted with caution, given that most of these studies were uh, conducted using the cross-sectional design. And also a bi-directional relationship between oral health and frailty possibly exists, even though it's not uh, explicitly or adequately tested in the literature. And finally, there is still need to explore, explore the role of nutrition as a mediator of the association between oral health and frailty. Thank you all for listening. And this is my email for any uh, communication related to this presentation. Thank you, Faisal, for an outstanding presentation. I am certain that we will be able to discuss uh, and, and that uh, Many questions will uh, be raised because of what you have just shown. Thank you so much. And now we will rapidly move into the next uh, presentation, which is uh, oral health and frailty implications, gaps, and what's coming next, which are the next steps. And it is Robert, Dr. Roberto Carlos Castrejon Perez, uh, a researcher on public health and oral health and aging in the National Institute of Geriatric Medicine in Mexico, who will be uh, speaking. Roberto, uh, please go ahead. The floor is yours. Hi, all. I am Roberto Carlos Castrejon Perez, and I will talk about oral health and frailty, implications, gaps, and next steps. I start by declaring that I have no conflict of interest. And after the presentations by Luisa and Faisal, uh, the aim of my presentation is to discuss the implications of the association between oral conditions and frailty, to present new questions to address, and to suggest some of the next steps on the topic. I will address the implications on oral functions on the temporary association between oral conditions and frailty, and we'll touch a few issues on the potentially causal association. I will close by presenting together some of the new questions and next steps for addressing the topic. The previous presentations highlighted the consistent association between oral conditions and frailty, despite the different operational definitions uh, or cutoff values for the number of teeth, for example. Also mentioned that oral function is the convergence of three systems, but must be aware that oral characteristics are relevant for oral function. And as stated earlier, oral conditions are treatable. Today, there, are, there is a solid body of evidence on various strategies to manage oral conditions, especially to replace the missing teeth, which would allow us to enjoy the food flavor for, all, for a longer time in life. However, the functions of the mouth could, be, could not be managed by dental professional alone. 
and need to be a collaborative effort with the nutritionist and perhaps psychologists to rehabilitate the function of the mouth, especially because it seems that older adults get used to a low quality diet. And for improving the diet of a person, the dentist will help improving the oral characteristics. And a dentition could help to teach to include a broad variety of nutritious natural food. And this approach should be favored against the replacement of the food with supplements. We stated, we state, uh, sorry, we state earlier that the onset of oral conditions happens earlier in life and, as, and has a, an uh, accumulative effect, which zooms to the fact that oral conditions are interrelated with each other and may be close related to certain degree of long time, low grade undernourishment with effects or symptoms clinically evident at older ages. Older people today is, presenting, is preserving a larger number of natural teeth, which is a challenge for the management of health. This fact promotes that the incidence of conditions such as arthritis, Parkinson's disease and dementia should be considered as risk factors for oral conditions since would challenge the dexterity to perform cell for our care. In this manner, some have proposed a bidirectional association between oral conditions and frailty. On the causal association, Faisal mentioned that models, the models proposed to explain the association between oral conditions and frailty. And we propose this, uh, this model in the upper right a couple of years ago, incorporating sarcopenia and nutritional conditions as uh, on the path between oral conditions and frailty. But these models, these old models, respond to the studies design available, to the available study design with the frailty state, with the frailty status as a dependent variable. Oral conditions onset happens at young ages challenging the ability to identify or suggest causality, not only because of the time to the onset of frailty, but because oral conditions may impact on various dimensions of life and health, such as self-esteem and social interactions, which, which have been also suggested associated with the onset of frailty. Additionally, the oral function is the convergence of three systems as stated earlier, and the failure of any of these systems may result in a compromised oral function. With this approach, sarcopenia may explain part of the reduced bite force and the reduced tongue pressure in any other people. And stroke may explain part of the reduced dexterity to maintain the food in the mouth while eating. That, that will also challenge the ability to chew appropriately the, it, uh, while eating. This is not the argument to highlight the relevance of oral conditions, but to point to frailty as a complex condition, which may require, require complex multidisciplinary approaches to manage. On the other hand, cognitive decline and dependence, uh, dependence in instrumental activities of daily living will also challenge the ability of, every of older people to maintain self-oral care. So, uh, as new questions and next steps, we can identify several opportunities from the design of the case control studies, addressing the potential effect of frailty on oral conditions, comparing the oral decline rate between frail and non-frail people, or comparing the survival rate and frailty in incidence according to the oral conditions among frail and non-frail people. Also, to design some new prospective studies aiming to evaluate the incidence of incidence and decline rate of oral conditions among frail older people. <clears throat> we could also perform some clinical trials exploring the effect of multidisciplinary interventions, including oral rehabilitation, diet rehabilitation, and exercise in older people to evaluate the incidence and progression to frailty the survival of older people 
and the compression of dependence for the last years of life. For these, we should, uh, I, I will highlight the, the opportunity to complement uh, dental interventions, nutritional interventions, exercise intervention, but nutritional interventions should be uh, also including nutritious natural food plus supplements required. The questions are vast, but the answers for these questions for sure should be collaborative. As for dental professionals, we already know frail people, oral conditions uh, and functional status. Therefore, we can say that they need to recover and improve their quality of life, to have access to a broader, broader, broad variety of nutritious food and preserve oral hygiene. And for achieving so, the dental professionals should offer quality treatments, short-term treatments, in-home treatments when possible, have a proper treatment plan with a reduced number and short uh, clinical appointments, but also train their caregivers and avoid the utilization of additional medication, which lead us to the relevance of, co uh, of collaboration and communicating between uh, specialties, uh, is particularly with those responsible of the main health condition of the older patient. Thank you so much, and um, I hope you find this uh, information interesting, and feel free to comment. Thank you. Thank you so much, Roberto. Uh, with this, we end uh, our symposium, and now we will give way to questions and answers. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, and yeah, yeah. there, there is... Uh probably another issue that we are overlooking, and it's related to another question that, that has been raised by the audience. Uh, it's the role of the health professionals about oral health. Uh, and then why, why do you think uh, that this is all so frequently overlooked? In fact, you have uh, gone through all the, uh, the, the, the review of uh, the, a, a very interesting functional approach that is maybe what we need uh, now. And, uh, the, but uh, when we think about the attitudes of other health professionals related to other health, what, what is behind this, uh, this uh, uh, over, over, systematically overlooking oral health? What do you think about it? Maybe Luisa could, uh, could uh, tell us, uh, and Faisal, and, and then Roberto. I mean, we dentists, we all, uh, we have a difficult with working with others. So even in the, the uh, graduation, we are not used, at least in Brazil, we are not used to work with different uh, multidisciplinary. And maybe it starts with that. But now that we want to, maybe we don't, the other professionals don't see us, you know, helping them. Actually, uh, I don't know why this, but I think we should, as dentists, we need to, still to prove that we are here to help, and um, and we need to show the, our work and the importance of our, our work, a multi in, multitasking uh, aspects. I Yes, uh, indeed, building on what Louisa said, um, uh, oral health is uh, overlooked, in, especially in the geriatric and gerontology uh, aspects. And perhaps uh, there are some tools to be incorporated into, for example, comprehensive, comprehensive geriatric assessment could be uh, some oral health measurement, simple self-reported oral health measurement could be easily included, for example, how do you rate your health, uh, the health of your mouth and teeth? And how many teeth do you have? Or do you have uh, pain in your mouth? These simple measurements could be 
simple indicators that this geriatric patient could use dental services or, or should be uh, referred to a dental professional for uh, <coughs> accessing and uh, solving these problems. And also there are other models that could be incorporated into care homes and uh, other, uh, uh, other geriatric uh, settings, for example, uh, uh, incorporating uh, other oral health professionals like dental hygienist, a dental assistant could easily perform some important and basic oral health needs for those uh, vulnerable populations. I, I think that's a, a very interesting point. How do we uh, teach uh, the oral health professionals to address oral health in a very simple and straightforward uh, manner? Uh, so that we could, for example, uh, uh, use uh, this uh, this approach to uh, to uh, enrich uh, the, the the performance of instruments like the like the ICOP initiative developed by WHO. We could easily incorporate uh, this oral health perspective. If we were able to to develop such an approach. What what do you think about it, Roberto? Definitely, that's something achievable. We already have the data. We already have the evidence on what it, it is working. And but we have to get to uh, organize it and have to agree that we have different levels of note of uh, data. We have to trust on self-report data. It is. It may be not the best. Of, um, data we would like to have access to but we have to rely on the utility of it and we have to acknowledge that there is different levels of, of uh, data that is required for different objectives at first we need to understand what is the condition of the population and how to improve it but today the world health organization is pushing into the, the person-centered approach and that is what matters for the people. And the best way to understand that is by listening to the, the, the patient. Then we as a professionals would like to, as a dental professionals, we would like to have people with 32 teeth uh, pristine in the mouth. But that is not something that all people are, is interested in. We have some issues with the tradition. Oral conditions have been uh, neglected by ourselves and the profession and different health professionals because we work separately. Because people with aging traditionally, and we and I will mention really old people and previous generations, because they experience oral conditions they think, and, and a lot of people, it, this is common knowledge, they expect to experience dental deterioration, oral deterioration, because they experience that during generations. Then we are not uh, used to understand and we are not willing to work the way to, to maintain a better oral health for ourselves. The, I, I have been uh, pointing out this very uh, frequently. Compartmentalization of health has been a great way to improve knowledge and to develop technologies and treatment for specific conditions. But, and today, 2022, we have a huge mass of knowledge on health. Yet we have to integrate it back together to improve the conditions of the people, of the patient. There is, yes, there is the need to, to continue growing on, on this compartmentalization approach, but for improving the quality of the treatment and the health of the population, we have to put it together to integrate it in, 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 in favor of the patient. This is how to do it. We have to use friendlier ways to uh, record data by trusting the self-reported data in, with instruments like ICO and to put it into the next level when designing interventions. Interventions should consider a larger 
age uh, group because in preventing oral condition of older population can should be uh, should begin with younger people but we have to teach older people how to take care of themselves and that they can have a better quality of diet and to regain joy for eating by improving the quality and the condition of their mouth. And this is dental interventions. We, as a dentist, we have, uh, uh, we have walked a large way to have different, a large variety of interventions accessible today, high tech, but we know and we have also all traditional dent dental interventions that work that make make it possible to improve the quality of the condition. And, and, and uh, from that uh, perspective, in fact, how this has evolved through the last uh, 50 years. In fact, the successive generations are uh, having better oral health around the world. And uh, this is another layer of complexity that we still have to add uh, to, to our approach. Uh, thinking about uh, a life course perspective, uh, uh, another issue that has not yet been addressed. Uh, I, I would like to know, uh, Luis, I, I didn't really pay, pay, uh, uh, heard about uh, this issue being addressed in, in, uh, in the already published literature. Sorry, could you please repeat? Yes, uh, a life course is a life course perspective already being addressed in the research that yes. is uh, available. Uh, yes, this life course, life course perspective. Yes, there are some studies, uh, but still they are they are following like um, like for 20, 30 years. So, uh, but we can we can see if I understood what you asked that uh, that it's really important to work with young young people to maintain their teeth so they will have them and uh, and I have a better perception throughout lifespan i'm not sure if that was what you asked yeah. absolutely just yes. indeed yes. That, that's, uh, that's, that's the point and maybe uh, we still have one minute and i have just uh, to close uh, I, I would like to, to, to hear you uh, with a, a phrase just closing what we have uh, discussed. Faisal? Yeah, basically, we have discussed a lot of things, and basically, oral health is very important for older population. And if, if I, there's something that I want to emphasize, I'm really uh, encouraging uh, researchers around the world and in geriatric area specifically to incorporate oral health it doesn't have to be clinical oral health it doesn't have to be you don't have to have a dentist to make a mouth examination you could use self-reported measures of oral health and these have showed validity and reliability in the literature so please consider using oral health uh, measurement in geriatric research that will be very helpful for uh, improving the field and also for the Point that you've made, like the dental transition, people are maintaining uh, more teeth at old age, and that have implications. For example, the uh, the rehabilitation of the mouth would be harder for older adults to have it at the age of 80, 90, compared to previously when people used to the, lose their teeth around 40s. They had the neurological and psychological capabilities to uh, go through oral rehabilitation, but that wouldn't be the case with the improvement and maintain uh, teeth at old age. We a closing comment. Well, I think there is there are two uh, ways to look at it. We still have to work uh, a lot to rehabilitate and to work multidisciplinary uh, in the multidisciplinary team to 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 give a proper oral health to all uh, to the 12 subjects, but we still have, we need to work with, also we still need to work with dental students and uh, to occupy these spaces and to work with them so they know how to act properly and to maintain uh, society oral health uh, in uh, an adequate 
way. So we need to, to be in both, taking care of both things. People with that have no teeth, the older ones, but the younger ones to keep their teeth. Thank you. Roberto? Well, I will say that uh, I will invite you all to overcome the myths and, and stereotypes around oral health. Come close to dental professionals, especially researchers. We will find a way to work it out together in order to improve the quality of our research or also to improve the, the design of interventions aiming to improve the condition of the patient. To understand, I think that to understand further frailty and the aging process, we have to work together. It is no longer a solo uh, work. Come overcome these myths and stereotypes, and we will find a way to work it out. We, may, we should help each other to improve the quality of our knowledge. Thank you so much, Dr. Luis Miguel, Faisal, Luisa. Thank you all for being here, for listening to our presentation, our symposium, and let's keep working. Indeed, I hope that we will soon be uh, seeing the, the paper uh, coming out from this uh, symposium. You have uh, all the, the, the information that uh, is needed for a very, very uh, interesting meta-analysis and, and then a series of uh, proposals to move uh, forward. So I, I think that uh, it's, uh, it's the next step. And, and thank you to you all. Thank you to the audience uh, for a very uh, in inter interesting uh, symposium. Thank you. Thank you.